long days and pleasant nights. I'm in Fuego here. Gracias so very much for joining me. And if it please you, let's have a little palaver here on Hail to Stephen King in this fifth and final installment where I'm discussing the 40th anniversary of Night Shift. Yeah, guys, this is the first and possibly most well-known Stephen King collection of short stories written uh, predominantly when he was young and raw and talented and not famous yet, which is what's cool. There's obviously a few others that were uh, published for the first time in here, one of which we will be talking about today. However, actually two of which now that I think about it, but you've seen all the previous stuff that we've covered already. I hope that you have been reading along with me throughout this series. And if you are discovering it quite a while after uh, I originally put these up, please comment, give some insight about just uh, taking this journey with me because I really enjoy doing this with you guys. So. For this fifth and final installment, yes, we have been tackling four stories per segment, and it's the final four. Yep, we are officially at that. And uh, no, not the final four of basketball, you crazies, although that is coming very soon. So uh, the first in the four we are discussing today is actually one of the previously unreleased, and it's called The Last Rung on the Ladder. I almost missed that. I was like, of the ladder, on the ladder? The Last Rung on the Ladder, guys. And <clears throat> essentially, this story and this is probably going to be a shorter episode for the sheer fact that three of these four are very short, in fact. And this one is, it's a story about a uh, guy who, uh, you know, was a boy at one point, obviously, and he's just reminiscing back to his childhood in this, when he gets a letter from his sister. And that's one of, like, the little linchpins of sorts, and, like, the mystery of the story is what this letter entails, and that's what you find out near the end. But it causes him to flash back to an instance that went down when... Him and his sister were kids, and uh, they had this thing that when the parents went away, they would go into the barn. Guess what? This barn is in Hevingford Home, the same place where Mother Abigail from The Stand lived. So you see, it's a little inter-universe connection with the king, as he loves to do. But So they like to climb to the very top of this huge ladder. There's like 43 different steps or, you know, rungs or whatever, I guess they would say. And so they would get on this beam, which is at the very top of the barn, and they would jump like 70 feet down. And they're like eight and 10 years old, respectively, when this goes down. And then it apparently been going down for a while. It was like they're, you know, they're bonding and goofing and doing something very stupid and not safe, but they would jump into the hay from, you know, way at the top of the barn. And so one particular day, the, uh, you know, the instant that he is recalling is where the last rung on that ladder, which had been loose for a while, it was supposed to be replaced, and his dad just kept putting it off, putting it off. Well, lo and behold, something happens that I, these are non-spoiler stories, I just want to give you enough of a taste to where you want to actually, you know, read this. But uh, it it's shows the bonding of family, but this story is also about how as we grow up, you know, and this isn't necessarily even talking about him and the sister per se, but... Uh, you know, him and his father who was mentioned at one point and stuff. It's how family just drifts away sometimes, you know, as we get older. And that's one of the real central themes of this story. It's not of the supernatural variety, so don't go in expecting something of that nature. But bottom line, I, I do enjoy this story. It's not, it's not up there with like Grey Matter or Jerusalem's Lot or Sometimes They Come Back or Children of the Corn. But, you know, as far as just emotional, just... Uh, it's, it's more a drama, you know? It's more, at least in tone, along the lines of, like, uh, the, you know, the body, you know, stand by me kind of thing, and just the, the camaraderie of childhood and just a crazy situation going down and stuff like that. So I, I really quite enjoy, especially as a previously unreleased, The Last Rung on the Ladder. The next one's even shorter. Yeah. And uh, the next one was actually filmed into a dollar baby that I saw last year at the International Horror Sci-Fi Film Festival, which is the spooktacular side of the Phoenix Film Festival. And it's called The Man Who Loved Flowers. That's right, yeah. And the premise is very simple. There's a guy walking through New York City. Everybody can tell he's in love. Yeah, he's got uh, that, that skip in his step. And you can just kind of tell that, uh, I mean, they say that when somebody is, you know, is head over heels, right? You know, that there's just a certain glow about them. I've had some people describe it as similar to like the glow of a pregnant woman, which is kind of crazy, but you know, it's just where, you know, the, the love of a child, you know, some the person that you're growing inside of you and the love for another person, it's, you know, it's, it's love of other people and whatnot. So essentially bottom line, just you, you can tell just there, there's, there's a certain look, you know, and this guy has it 
and he's skipping around, prancing around, and he's going to buy some flowers for for his love, and he has an amusing little uh, interaction of sorts with the guy trying to kind of weasel him with this deal for a nice bouquet, and uh, there's an old woman who, you know, just kind of sees it and, you know, is like, you know, just kind of almost like swooning over this, you know, handsome guy who, you know, you can tell has a sweetheart in his life and whatever. But uh, it's, it's one of those stories of the twist that unfortunately I can't really give here. There is something interesting about this, this sweetheart of his, and that's the only taste that I can divulge. And this is, this story is very short. I want to say it's like less than 10 pages, maybe, but I just reread it uh, just a couple days ago, and it's good. Um, brief and not a particular favorite of mine, but the just when you find out what's up with with his love of sorts, that's where it's uh, it's interesting and it kind of turns into a proper king tale. Now, I'm actually for the first time in all five of these segments going to jump to the last story and then save the second to last one for last. Sorry, sorry, but the title and the length of it and the subject matter is where things will make a little bit more sense. So, <clears throat> jumping to the final story, it's called The Woman in the Room, and this one is another. That's not, you know, it's just like the other two previous stories, it's based here in reality, and it's more on the dramatic side of things, and it's about a man whose mother is dying, terminal illness, and she's in the hospital, a hospice kind of place, and she's being cared for, but she's in so much pain, she's in and out of it, and he's, he immediately makes correlations with when he was very, very young, and he saw a similar thing happening with his grandmother, albeit the difference there is that they were caring for her at their home, and she didn't handle things as well as uh, as far as being, you know, just, you can't really use the term like cranky pants or something. I mean, would you be happy about, you know, seeing, like staring down the end of your life and just feeling that horrendous and horrible? Hell no, you wouldn't, you know, but perhaps some people deal with it better than others as far as the introspective aspect. But bottom line, his mom is dying and he he comes up with just the moral quandary of she doesn't want to be in pain anymore, and she doesn't want to be around. And we're not talking some Dr. Kevorkian and Shizzle or anything like that. Um, but, but yeah, it's it's just really dealing with just that whole aspect of assisted suicide, but maybe not quite as assisted as I don't know. And it just boils down to in this premise of will he or won't he? You know, is it something that he thinks she wants enough and that he can? and that he thinks is, is justified, and also, if he does decide to go through it, like, in, in the story he's debating, you know, could I, you know, do it and there wouldn't be a paper trail sort of thing. This was adapted by Frank Darabont into a Dollar Baby as well. He sent a letter to Stevie K, got permission, and that was how they had their initial interaction, and as you know from, man, the quality of Shawshank Redemption, the Green Mile, The Mist, uh, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's floating around on the YouTubes as well, so seek it out. It's uh, it's another short, simple story, but one that, especially in the dramatic department, I think is incredibly effective. So now we get to the last story, and the last story I kind of think should have been put last, especially since it's called One for the Road. Yeah, this is your last one for the road, guys, here in the Night Shift discussions, and uh, this was also done as a short. Unfortunately, it was never released. I'm not sure if there were rights issues or something. It had Reggie Bannister from Phantasm in it, and as I think I mentioned on the previous video, I got in contact with this Irish filmmaker who did it, and he sent me a code to the private Vimeo video so I could actually watch it, and it was pretty damn good, but the, the source material, as with most Stephen King stuff, is better. One for the road, the term is actually, it's got double meanings in this, but one of them is a phrase that's actually uttered in the short story, you know? Have one more beer before you leave the bar, you know, have, have one for the road. And you basically have this traveler from New Jersey burst into this bar and he's like, my car's broken down in Jerusalem's lot, ha ha ha, yeah. And this is more or less an epilogue of sorts to Salem's lot. And uh, immediately the guys in the bar are like, whoa, the lot's been, you know, the lot's been done for a while, you know, and you find out some postscript stuff is just, you know, what happened to any surviving vampires there and, you know, how the surrounding towns people view and treat the place and whatnot. And so, yeah, his vehicle's broken down and this dumbass makes the big mistake of leaving his wife and child back there while he goes on foot for help and um, somehow convinces two of the guys at the bar to go and help him against their better judgment. And 
I can't mention anything beyond that, but this is the longest and definitely it's a great postscript, I think. Even though it doesn't have any characters from, from Salem's Lot in it, the fact that just like Jerusalem's Lot was a very cool like precursor, you know, almost like prologue of sorts, I honestly recommend, guys, if you get the chance to, if you read Salem's Lot or have read it at some point in time and have not read One for the Road or Jerusalem's Lot, they are fantastic bookends. And they even included them in, it's on my shelf over there, that illustrated re-release edition of Salem's Lot. So uh, this, is, this is a scary story, back to some solid supernatural stuff. And I, man, One for the Road, it joins the aforementioned you know, sometimes they come back in Grey Matter and Children of the Corn and Jerusalem's Lot. And it's like my favorites on here. I was originally thinking of doing a final ranking for Night Shift here, but I don't think that's ultimately necessary unless you guys actually want me to do kind of a, a, a post follow up where I just rank all of these all of these stories from this series. But you know what? I don't think that's ultimately necessary. So I want you to get your hands on Night Shift, if you've been reading along, gracias, I've been Jaime Fuego. You can find me on all social media sectors, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, yeah, also uh, make sure to like, share, and if you have not yet done it, subscribe here on The Horror Show. And if you share this video, please be sure to do it with the hashtag, hail to Stephen King. I appreciate all of y'all, and until the Wheel of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos, and constant viewers here and until we meet once again remember <laughs> stay scared and read stephen king especially one for the road thanks for having just one more of these for the road with me